In the sacred pages of the Epistle to the Philippians, we unearth treasures of divine wisdom and spiritual insight. This apostolic letter, penned by the great Apostle Paul during his imprisonment, serves as a beacon of light in a world filled with darkness and uncertainty. Within its verses, we discover profound truths that resonate across the centuries and hold enduring relevance for believers today. As we embark on a journey through Philippians chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, we find ourselves at a crossroads of Christian thought and conduct. In these verses, Paul confronts a situation that exposes the delicate interplay between human motives and the unwavering truth of the gospel. We are presented with a vivid contrast between those who proclaim Christ with impure motives and those who do so with sincere hearts. Yet amidst this spiritual tension, we glimpse the Apostle's unshakable faith and his unwavering commitment to the exaltation of Christ. In the following exposition, we will delve into the intricate layers of this passage, exploring the motivations that drive individuals to preach the gospel and the ultimate purpose that transcends human intentions. We will witness the apostles rejoicing in the midst of discord and division, reminding us of the paramount importance of the gospel message itself. As we navigate these verses, may our hearts be stirred, our minds enlightened, and our faith strengthened. For within the words of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 15 through 18, lies a timeless message that challenges us to reflect on our own motives, priorities, and the central mission of proclaiming Christ to a world in need. Let us embark on this spiritual journey, guided by the Holy Spirit, as we seek to glean profound insights from this portion of God's Word. In the timeless letter of the Apostle Paul to the beloved church in Philippi, we encounter a passage that resonates with profound significance for every believer. As we journey through the Epistle of Philippians, we find ourselves standing at the precipice of a spiritual revelation, poised to delve into the depths of God's Word. In verses 12 to 14, Paul elucidates the circumstances surrounding his imprisonment, unveiling a majestic truth, the gospel cannot be chained. Despite his chains and captivity, the gospel continues to advance, resolute and unstoppable, bringing salvation to the lost and hope to the desperate. Now, as we venture into Philippians chapter 1 verse 15, we are confronted with a reality that, while uncomfortable, is nevertheless vital for us to comprehend. It is a verse that underscores the enduring relevance of the gospel and the ever-present battle between true and false teachers within the body of Christ. Paul writes, some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. What a striking contrast. In these few words, we glimpse the spiritual battlefield where the eternal souls of men hang in the balance. Firstly, let us focus on those who preach Christ from envy and strife. It is a grim reminder that even within the church, there are those who motivated by jealousy and rivalry, proclaim the gospel. These false teachers, driven by selfish ambition, do so not out of a genuine love for Christ, but to further their own agendas. Their motives are tainted, their hearts corrupt, and their message distorted. Yet, in God's sovereign plan, even their perverted proclamation serves to magnify the truth. The gospel is so powerful that it can shine through the darkest hearts, exposing hypocrisy and leading some to genuine repentance. Secondly, there are those who preach Christ from goodwill. These are the faithful servants of Christ, motivated by a genuine love for God and His people. Their hearts are aligned with the gospel, and they proclaim it with sincerity and purity. They labor tirelessly, not for their own glory, but for the exaltation of Christ and the salvation of souls. 
their messages untainted, their hearts pure, and their testimony resounding. They embody the very essence of the gospel they proclaim, leading others to the transformative power of Christ's redeeming love. Now, beloved, what can we glean from this passage? We must recognize that the gospel itself is unshackled by the motivations of those who proclaim it. It is a force that transcends the intentions of men and operates according to God's divine will. The gospel is not hindered by the impure motives of some. It triumphs over them, transforming hearts and minds and bringing salvation to those who believe. Let us remember that the gospel is the heartbeat of our faith and we must guard it zealously. We should strive to be like those who preach Christ from goodwill, embracing the purity of motive and the sincerity of heart. Yet in a fallen world, we must also remain vigilant against those who preach Christ from envy and strife, discerning the truth from falsehood. In the midst of this spiritual battlefield, may we never lose sight of the gospel's transformative power. It is the gospel that unites us as believers, that calls us to repentance and faith, and that compels us to share the good news with a world in desperate need of salvation. Let us therefore stand firm in the truth of the gospel, proclaim it boldly, and trust in God's sovereignty to use even the imperfect messengers to bring glory to his name and draw souls to himself. In verse 15, we encounter the stark contrast between those who preach Christ with impure motives and those who do so with goodwill. Now, as we move to verse 16, we find a remarkable continuation of this theme as Paul reveals the ultimate purpose behind both kinds of preaching. He writes, The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains. Here, we see that the false teachers, driven by their own ambitions and insincere motives, sought to compound Paul's sufferings in prison. Now, let us unpack the significance of this verse. Those who preached with impure motives weren't content merely to preach a distorted gospel. They aimed to heap more misery upon the apostle, perhaps hoping to undermine his authority or diminish his influence. Their actions were, in essence, a betrayal of their supposed faith in Christ, for they exploited Paul's imprisonment to advance their own agenda. Herein lies a profound lesson for us today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The gospel is a message of love, grace, and selflessness, and it should never be used as a tool for personal gain or to harm others. The actions of these false teachers serve as a stark warning, reminding us of the potential dangers of pride, ambition, and a distorted understanding of ministry. But now, as we shift our gaze to verse 17, we encounter a remarkable twist in Paul's narrative, one that showcases his unshakable trust in God's providence. He states, but the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. In contrast to the selfish motives of the former group, there were those who preached Christ out of genuine love for Paul and a deep understanding of their shared calling to defend the gospel. This distinction is crucial, for it reveals that even in the midst of adversity and opposition, there were faithful brethren who recognized Paul's divine calling. They understood that he was appointed by God to be a defender of the gospel, and they rallied around him in unity and love, strengthening his resolve in the face of adversity. As we contemplate this passage, we are compelled to examine our own hearts and motives. Are we driven by selfish ambition and envy, seeking personal gain in our service to Christ? Or are we motivated by a sincere love for God and His Word, recognizing that we are appointed for the defense of the gospel? Let us follow the example of those who preached Christ out of love, standing firm together in the face of opposition and defending the truth of the gospel with unwavering devotion. 
Dear brothers and sisters, let us heed the lessons of Philippians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. May we guard our hearts against the perils of impure motives, and may we be a source of encouragement and support to those who faithfully defend the gospel, even in the midst of adversity. In doing so, we honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and participate in the glorious mission of proclaiming His redeeming love to a world in need of salvation. In verses 16 and 17, we encountered the stark contrast between those who preached Christ with impure motives and those who did so with genuine love and a shared commitment to defend the gospel. Now, as we move to verse 18, the Apostle Paul provides us with deeper insight into the outcome of these differing motives and approaches. He writes, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And in this I rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. Here we find Paul's remarkable attitude and unwavering focus. Despite the discord and mixed motives within the body of Christ, he remains fixed on the central truth. Christ is preached. This verse serves as a powerful reminder that the ultimate aim of our proclamation of the gospel is the exaltation of Christ, regardless of the purity or impurity of the messenger's motives. Paul's joy is not contingent on the motives of those who preach, but on the fact that the message of Christ is proclaimed and that souls have the opportunity to hear and respond to the gospel. Now, what can we glean from this passage as followers of Christ in the present day? We should take heed of Paul's perspective and priorities. It is easy to become ensnared in debates over the authenticity of various ministries or the motives of those who proclaim the gospel. While discernment is vital, we must not lose sight of the bigger picture, the proclamation of Christ crucified and resurrected. In a world filled with distractions, divisions, and competing voices, we must remember that the gospel is the heart of our faith. It is the good news that redeems, transforms, and offers eternal life. We are called to herald this message with boldness and clarity, regardless of the motives or circumstances surrounding us. Furthermore, Paul's rejoicing, despite the presence of pretentious preaching, teaches us the importance of maintaining a heart that is joyful and focused on Christ. We should rejoice when the gospel is preached, recognizing that it has the power to break through the hardest of hearts and lead individuals to salvation. Let us emulate the Apostle Paul's unwavering commitment to the proclamation of Christ. Let us not be discouraged by the imperfections of those who proclaim the gospel, but instead fix our eyes on the ultimate goal, that Christ is preached, souls are saved, and God is glorified. May our hearts be filled with the same joy and resolve as Paul as we continue to advance the gospel in a world that desperately needs the message of hope and redemption found in Jesus Christ. In our exploration of Philippians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 18, we have traversed through the corridors of spiritual truth, discovering profound insights that resonate deeply within the Christian soul. We have witnessed the Apostle Paul's unyielding commitment to the gospel, even in the face of discord, division, and varying motives among those who proclaim Christ. Through the lens of this passage, we have been challenged to examine our own hearts and motivations as believers. We have been reminded that in a world filled with distractions and differing agendas, the message of Christ remains paramount. Whether preached with pure or impure motives, the gospel itself possesses an inherent power that transcends the intentions of its messengers. It is a force for salvation, a light in the darkness, and a message of hope for a world in desperate need. Paul's joy in the midst of conflicting motives is a powerful example for us all. It reminds us that our ultimate rejoicing should be in the fact that Christ is proclaimed 
and souls have the opportunity to hear and respond to his message of redemption. As we bring our exposition to a close, let us carry with us the profound truths of Philippians chapter 1, verse 15 through 18. Let us embrace the unshakable foundation of the gospel, proclaiming it with boldness, sincerity, and love, regardless of the imperfections of those who join us in this sacred endeavor. Let us keep our focus on Christ, rejoicing that his name is exalted and his truth is declared. And may our lives be living testimonies to the transformative power of the gospel, drawing others to the grace, love, and salvation found in Jesus Christ alone. Dear brothers and sisters, may we go forth from this exposition with hearts ablaze for the gospel, motivated by love for Christ and a burning desire to see his name lifted high. Let us be unwavering in our commitment to the defense and proclamation of the gospel, for in this mission we find our true purpose and the fulfillment of our calling as followers of the risen Lord. Thank you for tuning in to Gospel Illuminations. We appreciate your time and your commitment to growing in faith through our content. If you found this video valuable and insightful, we kindly ask that you please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and fellow believers, and subscribe to Gospel Illuminations. Your support helps us continue to bring you biblically grounded content and spread the message of God's grace and truth. Thank you for being a part of our Gospel Illuminations community, and we look forward to sharing more inspiring content with you in the future.